Most of you recognized Becca, uh, who is in Romania with uh, the mission organization called YWAM. She was our uh, missionary project for Vacation Bible School this year, and all the money that was raised in Vacation Bible School is going to support her ministry in Romania. Uh, she has been stationed or posted uh, by the coast in Romania. Um, is that the Black Sea or the, the Mediterranean? Black Sea. And um, has been working uh, diligently there for over two years now. Uh, the problem she faced there, though, is that uh, in the metropolitan area, all of the kids, and particularly the young adults, want to learn English. So they're constantly pressing her to speak English to them so that they can learn English, and it's hampering her learning the native language in Romania. So I'm not sure, a month or two ago, she uh, moved into the interior of Romania into a very small village where she sent us this video uh, from, where no one speaks English. And she is uh, in basically a uh, self-imposed language intensive uh, to... Uh, be able to learn to communicate in the native language of the people. Um, she is, in fact, living the Roman road. Every day, her mission is to get up and to share God's word with others through word, whether it's English or the native tongue, and deed. She mentioned working with gypsy kids. Now, everybody's heard gypsies, and if you have TLC, you've probably seen my uh, big, fat American gypsy show. Uh, these are people who are very flamboyant and, and uh, very different, uh, even in America, than we are. They are historically a nomadic people, and um, in all of the nations in Europe where the gypsies reside, they are looked down upon as second-class citizens. Uh, they are considered thieves and and uh, swindlers and, and people who take advantage of, of the native people. Uh, and one of, one of her callings is to minister within this population, especially to young teenage girls, and help them discover the love and acceptance they can find in Jesus Christ. Can you imagine living somewhere where everywhere you turn, people look down upon you everywhere you turn, People are skeptical of you. Everywhere you turn, people think that you are a liar and a cheat. Well, that's exactly what these teenagers are growing up believing. And all of a sudden, this blonde-haired American is coming and saying, Hey, I believe in you. I trust you. I love you. I accept you the way you are. That's hard to swallow. But you know... In the transition of becoming an unbeliever to a believer, that same assurance is hard for people to swallow. You don't have to be a gypsy. You don't have to be a Romanian. You just have to be a sinner. And when somebody tells you that Jesus loves you and that he is willing to forgive your sins, what is the first thing we often think or we often hear out of other people's mouths is, Oh, not me. I've, I've done too much. Too much water under the bridge. I, I, I'm unsavable. I'm unredeemable. I'm no good. Well, the Roman road is a, is a tool that we can use to share that somebody who is so no good is absolutely beautiful in the sight of God. See, that, that's, the, that's the wonder of God is that he looks down on you and he sees something beautiful he sees something redeemable he sees something worth saving he sees someone that he loves beyond compare so just like these gypsy teenagers in Romania and through Europe and even in America, where everybody else looks down on them, somebody is bringing them the Word. And what's the Word? The Word is the Scripture for today. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Can you imagine hearing those words for the first time when you have been condemned every step of the way all of your life? You've made poor choices. You did not do well in school. You left college before you graduated. You've had a string of jobs that you've never been successful for. And everybody looks down at you and says, you are a loser. Condemnation after condemnation after condemnation heaped upon you by everybody around you. Sometimes those people who are closest to you, your own family and friends. If you had just stayed in school, you could have made something of yourself. If you just waited a little longer before you started a family, you'd, you'd have been better off. If you'd just taken the job I told you to take instead of the job you did, you'd be so far ahead. And we hear those negative words replay in our mind day after day and time after time. And we go, God, we are unredeemable. But our scripture says today, therefore there is now no condemnation. No one is beyond redemption. No one is beyond saving. No one is beyond hope. When you put your hope in Jesus. And I love verses 38 and 39 where he says, For I am convinced. I am absolutely convinced. Assured, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is found through Jesus. What a beautiful conclusion to the Roman road. You know, and, and, and I've talked all along that uh, <clears throat> this sermon series on the Roman road hasn't been about you getting saved. You're already saved. You're already a Christian. It's about giving you the tool, a very simple tool, to use to share your faith. Well, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I can't. Uh, I can't speak well. Uh, I, I trip over my thoughts. Uh, I, I stumble with my words. We're talking about four or five very simple paraphrase sentences that can lead someone to the understanding that they are redeemable. That God loves them beyond compare. What does the scripture say? That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through the Son. Now if we believe that as Christians, and if we believe there's only one way to eternity, one way to salvation, one way to heaven, then we've got a story we need to tell. Because every time we don't tell that story... Someone else slips farther down the precipice toward hell. I don't want to be responsible for people going to hell because I didn't share. Well, that's a little extreme there, John. And you're not responsible for people going to hell. It's their choice. They decide whether to follow Jesus or not. But if they don't hear, how can they choose? If they don't know, how can they believe? Oh, somebody else will tell them. You know, I, I've used that one in my own head before. I, I, now, God will send somebody else to them. You know, sometimes no one else comes. And they're just like me, not brave enough to step forward and share my faith. So this whole sermon series is being built on challenging you to share your faith because you believe that Jesus is the only way. 
Now, if you're a universalist, you say, no, there's multiple ways to heaven. Okay? Jesus is a way, but Islam is a way, and Buddhism is a way, and just living a good, healthy life is a way. Well, then you're deceived. I'm all in here, okay? I have pushed all my chips in. And if I end up in the afterlife standing before some other God, other than God the Father, I want to say, hey, I believe in Jesus. But I don't think that's going to happen. But I think there's a whole lot of people who believe that universalism or don't believe in God at all or have never been challenged with the truth who will stand before God and they will say, when did I not feed you? When you were hungry. When did I not clothe you when you were naked? When did, not, when did I not give you a drink when you were thirsty? When were you in prison and I didn't visit you? And what will the Savior say? Depart from me. For I did not know you. Oh, 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 oh give me a second chance. I, I, I believe now. Well, what is faith all about? Believe me when you don't see. Our job is to share our faith. Whether you're in middle school or high school or college or you're a senior citizen or you live in a nursing home or you live in a nice neighborhood or you live in a poor neighborhood, it doesn't matter. You are confronted every day with human beings that need to hear the truth. And the truth is so simple to tell. Philemon 1.6 says, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. It was Paul's challenge to an individual. I pray that you will be active in sharing your faith so that you will have the fill of understanding of every good thing that you have in Christ that your life will be full and abundant because you were willing to share. And this whole series has been, well, what do I share? Simple, one-sentence phrases that speak the truth in a simple and fantastic way that can lead someone to Christ. Romans 3.23 for all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. And you take out your Bible and you can walk through this with me and you will see that just in a matter of moments and within probably three or four pages of your Bible, you can share these verses with someone. Now, you, pay, you turn a page over. Okay. For me, it's two pages. And we look at Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. Now, this, they'll stop you there and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're laying too much stuff on me. You're saying, I deserve to die. But listen to the rest of the verse. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in or through Christ Jesus our Lord. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one is perfect except one of our young people. Okay? And at that age, they should think that. But the rest of us are sinners. And we deserve death, according to chapter 6. Verse 3. Go back a page or two in your Bible to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. It says, but what? But God demonstrated, in, demonstrated His love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You mean there's nothing I need to do to make this right? <clears throat> no, there's nothing you can do to make this right. 
You are a sinner, and you cannot work your way toward salvation. You cannot give your way toward salvation. You cannot earn your way toward salvation. Well, then what's the use? Right? That's the point. There is no use in trying it on your own. Because while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A couple more pages. You can turn in your Bible to chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And you can see it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's all I've got to do to be saved? is declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. You've got to believe it in your heart. It's not just a word thing. It's just not a, a walk the aisle because mom nudged me and says, you're 10 now, I'll get down there and join the church. It's you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. It's a heart thing first. It's a faith thing first. And that's, that's what they need to know. Okay, so you told me I'm a sinner, and that I can't do anything about it, and all I need to do is believe in Jesus, and I can be saved. Yes. Ah, that's just too easy. It can't be that easy. It is, in fact, that easy. It is, in fact, that easy. Verse farther down in verse 12 or 13, it says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You mean <clears throat> even me? You know, because I've tried a lot of things and it hasn't worked. And I don't want to call out to God and have him say, no, not you. Everybody else but you. Everybody on the right, but not on the left. Everybody with brown hair, but nobody with blonde hair. Everybody who's never spoken a profanity. And nobody who has uttered a curse word before in their life will enter the gates of heaven. No, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. There is no reason not to believe. There is no reason not to give your life to Christ. There is no reason not to choose to follow. Well, I don't know. Things will get in the way. Uh, um, problems will occur. Somebody will come and snatch it from me. There, there's too many things out there that, that are going to interfere. No, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present or things to come, nor powers or height nor depth or any other created thing will be able to separate you from the love of God. Once you give your life to Him, He will... Guard it forever. It, it's that simple. Just a handful of verses that you can plant in your heart. Well, I don't memorize well. You can memorize to paraphrase this half a dozen verses that you can share at a moment's notice with somebody who is ready to hear. Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can ever be against us? And I'm here to tell you today that God is for you. He is on your team. He is rooting for you. He is cheering for you. He is calling your name. And He is saying, You can do it. If you trust in me. You can do it. If you only believe. Not believe in yourself. Not believe in personal power of, of the self. Or, 
or this person or that person, but in God, your belief can see you through. The truth will see you through. So as we close out the Roman Road series, the challenge is simply to you all to share. Be brave. Be courageous. If this is something that is important to you, it should be important to everyone else too. And God will give you the ability. If you take that step of faith, He will give you the words. He will give you the courage. He will give you the strength to speak the truth. And lives will be changed. You won't save anybody. God does the saving. He just calls us to do the sharing. And once you do the sharing, God takes those words and plants them deep within that person's heart. Now sometimes that, that soil of their heart is fertile and is already ready to blossom. And in that moment they say, I believe. Now sometimes you'll plant those words and that soil will need a little more work. But those seeds are planted and God will begin to work on that individual's life for weeks, months, maybe years to come. But at some point along the way, with those words planted in their heart, that, that <clears throat> blossom will spring forth and they will go, I believe. And they will enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ Jesus, their Lord. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't make it bigger than it is. Simply, if God gives you an opportunity to share, share. Now, we've gone through this sermon series, and, and I've told you all along this is for Christians, but if there's an individual here who has not confessed with their mouth and believed in their heart that Jesus is Lord, this morning is the morning to make that choice public and to say, you know what, I've heard these sermons and I believe in my heart that Jesus is God's Son, that He died on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins, that He ascended to heaven where He lives eternally, and that He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe that, and I want to say that, and you will be saved. Today is the day to make that choice. Don't leave this place today without choosing to follow Him. I don't know, often get hellfire and brimstone-ish, okay? I can take my shoe and start beating on the communion table if you like, okay? But you may walk out this door this morning and you may get hit by a train, run over by a car, have an acorn drop from a, an oak tree and split your head in half. You can't pass this opportunity. And I don't want you out there dodging acorns for the rest of your life. Choose today to follow Him and make that profession public. For everyone else, I want you to pray for courage and strength to share God's Word with others.